Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for August 8th, 2012. Uh, I'm Matt Gradwall at UppercutWoodworks.com and you can find me on Twitter at um, UppercutWood. Here with Chris Wong. You can find me at Flare Woodworks on Twitter at Flare Woodworks. And our special guest today is Steve. You know him as the Mr. Mere Mortals. Where That's can you me. find Hello, you, Steve? <laughs> Hello. Steve, where can people find you on the web? Uh, WoodworkingForMereMortals.com or just Google it, you'll find me. I'm all over the place. YouTube, you know, Facebook, everywhere. Cool. So um, thanks for joining us today, Steve. We really yeah. appreciate it. You are one of my favorite online woodworkers. Uh, quick announcements. Next week we'll do wood chat again on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're not going to have any special guests. We've had four special guests in a row, and we figured it would just be time to kind of just have a wood chat for wood chat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just going to hang out hang out with the wood chatters. Um, if you're watching the video and you want to participate in the text chat and get some questions to Steve, um, you can do that on Twitter. Um, send your question. Make sure you include the um, hashtag wood chat. Or you can just go to uppercutwoodworks.com slash wood chat slash chat room, log in with your Twitter account, and you'll see the entire um, chat happening there and be able to chat with everybody else that's in the it's in the chat room. So, with the, uh, Chris, do we have any other announcements that you can think of? We had some extras last week. Okay, cool. No, I think, um, no, that's, that's it. Cool. So, um, so we're going to get started here. We've got some questions for Steve lined up. Um, one of the things, we just had all the guys from Wood Talk Online Radio on, um, and we're asking them the same questions. So we'll ask you, uh, how did you get your start in woodworking? How did you get interested in woodworking from the kind of at the beginning? Well, the beginning was actually it goes back to my father and my grandfather got me interested in woodworking. My my grandfather, I used to he lived in Colorado, but he he lived quite a distance away from Denver where we lived. And when I would go visit him, he always was puttering around, and he had a little garage, and he had a little like not even a shop really. It was like a work area in <laughs> in his garage, and. So he had a lot of tools. He, half of these tools here were my grandfather's tools. He just loved tools, hand tools. And so I would just hang out with him. And he never really built anything spectacular or anything, but I, I just remember puttering around and fixing little things, and it just kind of got my interest in tools. Whereas my dad uh, had always been building things, and he bought, when I was probably about eight or nine years old, he bought a uh, Shopsmith. You know, I think they still make the same Shopsmith. It's Shopsmith like that, Mark V. The Mark V, yeah. It, yes. It's this cool tool for anybody who doesn't know. It's like this all-in-one power tool that it, it flips around and it makes into a table saw and a horizontal drill and <laughs> sanders, all this stuff on one tool. And so I just thought that was the coolest thing. And actually, the first stuff I ever did on that was using the lathe. I thought that was really fun. I made a whole bunch of lamps. And because it had the horizontal drill, <laughs> so I could drill a hole all the way through the, the body of the lamp. But uh, that's pretty much how I got started in woodworking. And so I just kind of, and I've been doing it off and on. Then I lived for a long time in San Francisco, and I didn't have a shop in San Francisco, so I would, uh, if I, I needed to build something, I would actually, we lived on a, a six unit building, and we were on the top floor, and so I would just take extension cords and then wire them up to the roof and then I could just bring my tools up there and just build stuff up there. So hey, it's a lot nicer having a shop, definitely. So I put a picture of the Shopsmith Mark 7 uh, on the screen, but table saw, disc sander, lathe, horizontal boring machine, drill press, shaper, router. Uh, so the only mm -hmm. thing it doesn't have is a bandsaw, really. I don't know. If it a joiner be. and a planer. I don't see joiner and planer, but it wow. Probably does. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool. The only problem with it now, I can't really imagine working on one too much just because of it kind of interrupts your workflow. I, I never really know a whole series of events of what I'm going to do. So I may saw, saw something on my table saw, and then I just run over to my disc sander and sand it and then run back. And Yeah. Shopsmith, you have to constantly be changing those tools around, and so that's the yeah. only drawback to it. But boy, they've got a huge, like, loyal fan base of Shopsmith. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be organized when you have a combo machine. You need to get all your cross cuts done, then all your rips, all your drilling, and then you, you, gotta, you back and forth. you got to know what you're going to do. And I, I yeah. rarely yeah. 
I really never really know what I'm going to do until I just start. Yeah. I feel like, like this right now. I've got this. Uh, Here's my drawings. Look at that. You probably can't see that, can you? There yeah, a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's uh, there. <laughs> so that's like that's my sketch up. Right well, we're planning. That's that's pretty good. That's better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at that, and it's it just sort of gives me an idea of what I want to do. But really, I, you know, I just kind of start cutting wood. Yeah. Is that going to be a clock? No. You know what it's going to be? <laughs> this is going to be. Oh, here I've got part of it right here. This is going to go. This is a back to school project. So this is going to go on the inside of a locker. Uh, I measured oh, okay. at my son's school. That, but, you know, not a lot of kids use lockers anymore, I don't think. And I know at his school, the lockers are real small. They're only this wide. They're five inches wide, and they're, like, this big. They're little bitty things. And so I measured it to see if they could put this on there. So it'll be a magnetic couple doors on here, and there's going to be a mirror and then a whiteboard on here. So I guess it's for girls, really, would be probably be mm. mostly who that's. So I'm not even going to know what I'm going to do with it. Mm. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, it'll be a good... Simple little project. If I could really figure out what I'm going to do with it, and then I have these little these little shelves in here, but I'm not really sure what what you would put in those. So I, I kind of thought maybe like lipstick or something. chapstick, <laughs> lipstick. Yeah, man, that's what I'm going to do. And I know, I I know what's going to happen. As soon as I post this video on YouTube, like half of the comments are going to be how I can hide illegal things in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, uh, I usually disable the comments for the wood chat videos on YouTube just because I don't care. <laughs> like, the wood chat people are going to be in the Twitter transcript script and the YouTube commenters. I kind of just don't care, so. Uh, so did you ever do any, like, formal woodworking training, or is it all no. self-taught and dad and grandpa? Yeah, just kind of fooling around with it. And uh, I think my dad taught me most of what I know, and then a lot was just... Uh, and he was really never taught either, you know, he just kind of, yeah. like, I don't think a lot of it is really that, I mean, I don't really do anything that complicated, so it's, <laughs> um, I, you know, I've made some pretty nice projects that have taken me a long time to build, and then, but I, I kind of lose interest in long term, I'm just, I don't have the patience. <laughs> I do, yeah, one, one a week, and so that's, I just kind of crank them out, and so that's really... Mostly what I do is, because I don't really consider myself, you know, like a woodworker. I don't know if I'm really in that club, so to speak. Because <laughs> mainly, I think people, people kind of watch what I do mainly for kind of to give them ideas. And I don't really show, like, step by step how to. I don't consider myself trying to teach anybody to do anything. I'm just like, well, here's sort of how I'm putting this thing together. Maybe this will give you some ideas on how, you know, you can do something like this for yourself. Mm hmm so how many, how many uh, weeks have you been doing this? How many projects do you think you've done so far? I am not really sure. I think i uh, probably got, about, I don't know, <laughs> maybe 150 projects or something. Like three years, three, three, three years, years worth, maybe? For the past five years, yeah. So I think, and this, within the last year or so, I've been kind of really steadily doing one project a week, getting the video out every Friday. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, doesn't, they don't always work out. Yeah, yeah. I watched the Olympic rings one where, <laughs> where you, you had struggling there, but it, the project still turned out great. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I can usually manage to get them done. There's only been a couple times where it's just been a complete and total failure, but I, I post those too because I want something to post. And you know, people learn something from that, anyways. I yeah. can kind of get something out. <laughs> There's been many projects where I'm about three quarters of the way through, and I just want to take it into the backyard and dump gas on it. And yeah, there's <laughs> no a candle yeah. and watch it go bye bye. There's a yeah. point in a lot of projects where I just kind of, and that's why I think I like the shorter, quicker projects, because there's a point in longer projects where sometimes I just, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I just kind of, I lose interest, and I'm just like, oh, God, I just, I can't do this any longer. You know. I don't know what happened there. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I just, uh, Chrome just decided that I was out of the Hangout, and then I was joining the Hangout, so sorry about that. That's cool, because I, I have two pictures of you now. On <laughs> I have... Yeah. I this have one over here will go away. The one that just shows the workbench will eventually... Google will realize that's an orphan and send it to the orphanage. Oh, sorry about that. So what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, the sh kind of the shorter projects and having yeah. some projects you wanted to set on fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what are you working on now? Is that a, is that a clock or no no that was that locker <laughs> <laughs> program here. 
but it had a round thing in the picture. Oh, that's going to be a mirror on there. I got these. Mirrors. Oh, okay. I did one of them. I, I, see these? Here it is. Watch this. Woo! Whoa! So whoa! I, uh, I I got this at the at the dollar store. Dollar stores are great, man. I get so much stuff at the dollar store because you can you get like mirrors like this for a dollar, and I got two of them because it's a two side mirror. Like, and your, like your glue brush. Yeah, yeah, and you just got to break them apart and use them. And so I busted one of them, and I thought, eh, it's only a dollar. So, you know, it's not like I had to go to Rockler or something and buy a, you know, $20 mirror or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> so um, to put together a project and to do the video, about how many hours a week are you putting into this? Uh, oh, easily 30, maybe. Wow. 30 hours, yeah. And a lot of, and plus a lot of it is just additional time just thinking about what I'm going to do because yeah. – and you know, shooting the video though is really is. It's nice to once in a while just make a project without shooting a video because I can do it a lot quicker. In fact, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. shooting the video is kind of a pain to, sometimes to figure out where because I, I don't really script anything. I really don't really know what I'm going to do, and then I usually end up shooting all this stuff and then cutting it way way down because I, I think that I try to get all of my videos as short as possible, ideally under five minutes. Mm -hmm. Last week's was kind of long. But I, I don't know. People just lose interest. I, I think that for YouTube is really my main audience, and for that, you know, you, you got to really kind of get to the point fast and show the project and get yeah. out. And that's what works. Hmm. So where do you get all the ideas for your projects? Because I, almost every time I see you build something, I say, "Oh, that is such a that's such a good idea!" Like, where did I? I mean, where are you getting all this stuff? Um, I don't know. I, I a lot of times I. I, I get inspiration at just odd places, whether I'm, you know, I may be at the supermarket and I see something there. I made a banana stand because I, I saw one at the supermarket and I thought, well, that was kind of cool. And it just kind of stayed in my brain and then eventually I got around to doing that. And What I do, though, is if I see something that is interesting, whether it's made out of wood or not made out of wood, mm -hmm. I think, well, how can I make that out of wood? Is there a way I can do that out of wood? And then... What I'll do is I'll use Google Images. It's great because then you can go in there and you can get all sorts of ideas of other ways that it's been built. And so I'm not really – usually I don't do anything that's new, but what I try to do is something that's been done but then just add a little something different on yeah. it. It's like this little locker thing would be a magnetic whiteboard or a mirror, both, but to have a little opening door in there where you can stash things <laughs> is just yeah. a little stash. Yeah. So – Spend about thirty hours a week doing this. Yeah. How do you find the time? You have a you have a day job, right? This has become my day job. I have both jobs now. <laughs> I'm doing this and my graphic design mm -hmm. business. So like today, I had a large design job that I was working on, so I didn't get a whole lot of time out in my shop, and so I just try to combine the two. That's that's cool. So um, you made a cajon. Yes. And you put a piezo electric pickup in there. Like, how are you getting all the technical details to do all this stuff? Well, I, you know, you can figure out anything. Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. So I don't think anything is really very complicated. I mean, it's just like woodworking itself. Anybody can learn it just by, you know, reading a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you think your day job um, has helped you in your woodworking at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just being able to design things. I started out, actually, my first real job was as a photographer, even though it doesn't show it from most of my videos. But, uh, yeah, and so I was a photographer, and then that led into graphic design. And so I kind of got in on the ground floor of graphic design right when, you know, digital imaging was really first starting. And so I was able to pick up Photoshop, Illustrator, and Quark at that time. Oh, okay. Um, just by using it, and so, and but it's the same thing. Actually, graphic design is the same thing as the woodworking I do. Is that graphic design is really not about making great art. It's just about doing things really, really fast and kind of working out a system. And so that's really helped me in, in the wood shop a lot. Definitely to kind of have the motivation to get a project done every Friday. <laughs> that's that's some pressure. I don't know if I could do that. Yes, it gets. It, sometimes it gets pressure. Like this week, here it is Wednesday, and I just got started on this. Sometimes though, it's I, I'm still working on the project on Fridays, and then I have to go edit the video real fast. We're making a toothpick this week. Yeah. 
<laughs> Today it's just a block of wood. Look how I made this block. I did that. Of wood. I, I made a block of wood. I know. I remember that. It was like a <laughs> like a fake iPhone. You called it or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And you also get the sometimes you get the whole family involved in the videos with costumes and music and yeah, my son looks, and. Uh, <laughs> My son is—he really loves to give me ideas, but he's—he has no interest in woodworking at all. But he loves—he uh-huh. loves the whole process of <laughs> shooting the video and everything. So yeah. that was a lot of good ideas. That's cool. So you've been doing this for a while. How would you say that your woodworking has evolved? Are you—are you less hand tool, more hand tool? Are you? I'm just—I don't—I just use hand tools occasionally. I rarely use hand tools. You know, only you know, mostly what I do is if like. I have a little piece of wood and I need to cut it off. And I think, well, should I really use my miter saw <laughs> for that? It's like I've got a little dowel this big, and you know, my first thought is I'm going to go over to my table saw, and <laughs> but then it usually just goes flying, and so I have to. Uh, so then, I, you know, I just use little saws and things. But yeah. um, the way my woodworking has evolved, in that mainly it's just gotten faster and more efficient, and mm-hmm. I, sort of, I sort of know what's going to work and what won't work. Yeah, a little bit of more ahead of time now. You've definitely got a lot of reps, and that helps, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you come across a bunch of different challenges, and you kind of know how to solve them when you reach right. them. Right. And every week is a new challenge, really. You know, and I never really, never really know what I'm going to do and how it, how to accomplish that until you actually kind of get there doing it. Yeah. And I hope it stays that way. Really, I don't want to kind of get into the mechanics of woodworking where it's like, well, now I have to do this kind of a joint, and so I've done that, I know how to do that, and move on to the next. I kind of, I get bored too easily. <laughs> have you ever done a really, really big project? The biggest project, yeah, I made my office, well, you can't see it from here, <laughs> but <laughs> huge desk in my office, I made that, I made yeah, a... Yeah, that was like a three or four video I didn't shoot a video of that one, actually. That was before I was shooting videos. And I've made uh, two different cabinets that I'm real proud of. I really like those. Uh, but, again, it just took me a long time to make those things. And, but, you know, I, um, well, yeah. <laughs> you ever want to take on a big, fancy project? Sometimes, and then I come to my senses. <laughs> I think about once a year. Yeah. This year, my biggest project was my uh, router table. Um, yeah. And that one, I was afraid nobody would watch that thing because it was just, yeah, just it was three episodes long. Uh, and but you know, I just thought I wanted this thing for so long. I really wanted a good router table, and so it was kind of fun to just make something. You know, full blown, all the bells and whistles I wanted on it. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That's cool. Chris, are there any questions yet from the chat room? Or I could just keep going because I have so many written down. You can keep going. I had one question for Steve the first. Um, okay. Steve, I see a whole bunch of hand tools behind you on the wall there. How right. many of those do you routinely use? I use them all. I use mostly, them all. These are mostly pliers that were my grandfather's, and I use all of those a lot. And the hand saws, I use a hacksaw. You know, I use a hacksaw mainly until recently when a friend of mine gave me one of those flush trim <laughs> saws because yeah. before I was using a hacksaw to do that. So I got a lot of use out of a hacksaw for doing that. And then, yeah, I use, you know, little saws like that. But you know what's cool is all these, all of these uh, pliers and wrenches and screwdrivers and things that were my grandfather's, He's got little notches in here. You can't see these notches from there, but they're little notches, and it's Morse code. Is <laughs> He was a telegrapher, and so he put his initials on all of his tools. So wow. It's really in Morse code. In Morse code. Yeah, it says PLR huh. on those, yeah. So it's, I always know those were his clients whenever I use them. <laughs> cool. That's pretty cool. I was talking with, talking with a friend yesterday about Morse code, and I was saying I want to build something and put Morse code on it and make it say, go learn Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> What does that say? Go learn Morse code. <laughs> cool. So, um, so you've recently had some tool upgrades. You, you mentioned the router table. Yeah. Table saw. Table saw, definitely. Uh, are there any other tool upgrades you've had uh, recently? Uh, no, not really. Just oh, the router, the the PC six ninety. Yeah, yeah, I use that all the time. That's recent. The table saw is recent and. Other than some just hand power tools, you know, like a little yeah. and stuff, that's about it. 
Cool. I, I try to get make use with what I got. Really, I'm not really a tool guy. Really, I don't. You know, I don't really. A lot of guys are just so into tools, and they know all the names and brands, and I don't really do. I don't really know yeah. that. It works. It works. And usually, I stop and think. Well, I like that yellow one I have. I don't know what it is, but it works well for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a um, there's a lot of people out there who I would consider tool collectors. Yeah. Um, it's interesting though. I I didn't realize that people did this, but Shannon Rogers today mentioned that he sold three thousand dollars worth of sapili to a guy who just collects wood. He doesn't woodwork. He just has a barn full of really nice wood. And I'm just, wow. what the heck's going on there? You know. The order. Order. Yeah, yeah, and he probably has them all out stacked and out and or you know. Okay, these are the wide ones and the thick ones and the tall ones and. Well, actually, you know, some this, this guy on my blog one time he sent me a picture. It was really cool. It was maybe a year or so ago. Up, he just found this really cool piece of wood, and rather than doing anything with it, he finished it and hung it on the wall just because it looked so cool. <laughs> and I thought, wow, what a great idea! It's like the wood itself is the art. I, I like that. Yeah, Chris has got a table that's kind of like that actually. Mm. Hey, it's not you're, hung on the wall. It's not hung on the wall, but you're, I mean, your maple table. Yeah. You you pretty yeah. much just said this piece of wood is kind of ready to go. It just needs. Yeah, you know, it just needs to be built and designed around that piece is what I did. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen a lot of wood like that where I just want to plane it smooth, put a finish on it, and, and put it in a picture frame. Yeah, yeah. So out of your tools, Steve, which one's your which one's your your favorite? Is it your table saw? Yeah, probably the table saw. I use that so much. It's so much nicer than my old table saw. I still have my old table saw. I took it apart. I've got a special project planned for that, which I haven't started oh. yet. I don't know. What I'm and what's your least favorite? My least favorite tool? Yeah. Well, actually, my least favorite tool that I wish I had a good tool would be my scroll saw. I've got kind of this antique scroll saw. It was from it was my father's. It was from the 1940s. And it just is hard to use. And I would like to do more scrolling, you know, with yeah. the scroll saw. I think that would be fun. But I still use it, but I kind of avoid using it just because it's kind of a pain. Yeah. <laughs> and my lathe is sort of that way, too. It's the same same way. Yeah. You got any tools that scare you? Uh, no, not really. I don't think so. So I got to tell you my uh, – I know you have a Porter Cable 690, but yours is new. Mine, mine was old. And – I had a very long, um, I guess it would be a pattern bit, and I was finishing mm -hmm. off the edge of a table, and something just didn't sound right, and I trusted my ears, and I turned off the router, and that bit was sticking out of there just crooked, and it was <laughs> loose in the collet, and I was just thinking, this thing, I mean, and it was, I was routing right at thigh height, and I was just thinking, oh, there goes my femoral artery, bleed out in the garage. Took the bit out of the took the bit out of the old router, walked it over to the garbage can, and just dropped it. And I tell you, ever since, man, routers kind of they, they kind of freak me out a little yeah. bit. I'm a little bit gun shy with routers, but well, it spins so fast, and they're so loud too. Router makes it. Yeah. And you got to be careful because if you feed the wood in too fast or or too much at a time, it'll it'll yeah. grab and that it yeah. It can, yeah. Yeah. I think it you know get kind of get used to it. It's not too bad. Yeah. But. I teach a couple of router seminars, and most of the work we do is in a table. And most of the participants are more comfortable with the router in the table. Absolutely. But I'm actually, the, I'm actually the other way around. I prefer to have it in my hands. Hmm. I'm less comfortable at the table. Oh, if, I can, if I can put it in a table, I, I'll do it. Yeah, I rarely yeah. use a handheld router. I'd say 90% yeah. is in, on the table, definitely. Yeah. I'm an anomaly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Um, but you know what I was thinking? Yeah. Matt, is if you had cut yourself with that router, and you'd had, you know, if it had, it had cut that artery or something, and you had a video camera, yeah, you'd have something there. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd have like, a. This is all the rage right now is shooting like these horrible woodworking mishaps. Yeah. Yeah. Woodworking safety week video. Yeah. yeah, and it's all—it's just okay. it, you know what it is. It's woodworking porn. Guys just like to look at this stuff. I'm like, oh god, that's horrible. It's like the hard hardcore horror movie for woodworkers, yeah. right? Yeah, it Rob is, and it was a <laughs> yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it would be more like the Washington Router Massacre. <laughs> uh, so when you look at your woodworking and where you've come, what 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 are the kind of things that you want to get into? You mentioned you'd like to do more scroll saw work. Yeah. 
I'd like to try it. You know what I'd like to try is some uh, intarsia, or is that what it's called? No, what's the, the cutting of, what's the other one called? There's another one. That's, that's uh, marquetry or parquetry? Marquetry. Yeah, what's marquetry. the difference? What's the difference? Par parquetry is geometric. Oh, okay. So I, I'd so like to do squares that, and stuff. Like where you, uh, you know, cut wood out and, and pile it in layers and make a, a picture out of it. So I guess that's intarsia, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that'd be cool. I'd like to try that. Yeah. And Tarsia is 3D. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's. I'd like to try that. I could do that. You need a scroll saw for that, I think. I know. Yeah. yeah. I can sort of use my uh, band. Yeah, you could use a small blade on a band saw, perhaps. Yeah. Cool. Or, uh, or a fret saw. Or if you could do it by hand, right? But yeah. Yeah, I've seen some really interesting stuff there. I like the um, the thing that if I had the patience and the time someday... Um, kind of doing the sand shading. I don't know what that is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think we lost... Did we lose Matt again? Yeah, uh, he's coming back. Oh. Yeah, there he is. Here goes again. All right. Okay, I'm never, I'm never doing it this way. This is a different setup, and I'm never doing it this way again. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. Anyway, Tommy McDonald a while ago, he built this crazy legs uh, federal leg table where each leg was different to show a different technique. And on one of them he did the bell flowers. And you know, you do um, a pie tin of sand on a hot plate and then you can put the uh, wood in there to sand shade it to give it a shadow effect or a 3D effect. And I think that would be I think that would be pretty cool. You could do some cool effects there. That sounds interesting, yeah. yeah it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And the, and and um it's it's a very it's a very federal thing, the bell flowers with the holly banding and things like that. So uh, we do have some questions from the chat room. The first Yay. one, the first <laughs> one was, uh, or the first one I noticed was, um, so you have a lot of fans on YouTube, but do you have any? Do you have any stalkers? Do you have any people that you always have to moderate their comments or? You know, well, you they're always like, hey, I'm going to be in the area. Can I stop by and hang out and have a beer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I get my, my share of that, definitely. But um, YouTube is fun. I mean, I love, po I mean, that's most of my audience is on YouTube, and so that's really kind of where most of my focus is. But, yeah, there's definitely some some odd characters on there. There was a guy recently who, uh, well, there's, recently I've gotten, like, it's the summertime. It's the heat or something. The weirdos come out. <laughs> there was a guy who was... <laughs> He w who was convinced that I was like putting satanic symbols into my work because I, I made this Celtic design on this little door harp thing that I made and yeah it's a Celtic design you know it was I think six it was, six 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 yeah, exactly and he said it was a, and so I told him no I think it's a nine 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 but uh, he was convinced and then recently a guy a guy thought that he after I did my live show and he was real serious and he said you know I, I really want to ask you are you on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like serious, and I was like, "Wow!" He says, "Well, you fidget in the way you move," and I'm like, "Well, yeah, I, I do. That's just kind of the way I am." But I said, "Yeah, I, I you know, hardcore meth addict." Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was well, his next reply? Can, can you share? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you gonna share your your drugs with me, man? I, I have a lot of fun on YouTube. Every place else, you know, I post my videos. You know, people are always nice and actually interested in doing things. But on YouTube. YouTube's fun though because wow, you get some really crazies on there, and so, yeah. and sometimes I kind of have fun with them though because I, I kind of you know like to respond to some of those smart ass comments. It depends on my mood. A lot of times I just delete them. Yeah, yeah. or you handle them in your um, in your in your other YouTube channel sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I, I do that. Right, I've got two YouTube channels, and so I, I I like having that second YouTube channel because that kind of lets me kind of. I don't know, catch up on other things that I really don't want to put into my videos. Because I noticed in my, when I was shooting my project videos, there was a lot of times things I wanted to say about that project or about other things, and it was just taking up too much time. It was making the video too long. And so I thought, really, do people really want to see this? They're probably most people aren't interested in that. So if people want to follow me on my vlog or the vlog, is that how you say it? Vlog or vlog? I've heard it both ways. I think vlog. I just say video podcast because I don't want to say vlog. vlog. Video vlog. Yeah. I feel, I feel like a Russian sailor when I say vlog. Yeah. It Welcome to me. my vlog. 
<laughs> it's an ugly word. I don't know. Because I was actually going to shoot one today because I wanted to talk about the Olympics because I'm really into the Olympics and yeah. stuff, especially the, the beach volleyball. And tonight is the, the gold medal match, women's beach volleyball. We're going to get gold and silver. I know. It's That's awesome. awesome. So that I, I really match last it. night was tough, man. That was that was pretty that was cool. Really tough. Beach volleyball has everything, yeah. It's it does have it. And they have a DJ. There's a guy whose yeah. job it is to be the DJ at the London Olympics beach volleyball playing like ACDC in between. Yeah. In between. I know. When they, they get up to like a match point, he plays another one, bites the dust. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, wow, how did you get that other team? You hear that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That That's great. I mean, that's the job I would want. I would... But I would choose, like, uh, Metallica Fade to Black. But yeah. I would play it while China's losing. <laughs> um, so somebody wants to know what your favorite beer is. <laughs> Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. This is it right here. I, yeah, uh, go Pale Ale. Yeah, I like ales. I really don't drink a lot of yeah. lagers because once I discovered... I actually used to brew my own beer, and once I learned more about beers and what a beer should taste like, it kind of spoiled me. And so I don't really drink log most American beers are lagers and they to me have very little flavor. There's some lagers that do, but most of the mass produced stuff is just basically water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's um there is the uh, what I call the high vol high consumption volume um, domestic macro beers. And when I go we have a place in eastern Washington and it can get very hot there. And I, I tend to prefer the high consumption volume American domestics. Um, I'm not going to name any brand names because I would just get flamed. But <clears throat> it would be bad. So, um, have you? Uh, you mentioned Google Images. Have you um, looked around on Pinterest at all? No, I, I don't know what Pinterest is. I don't get it. I, I'm kind of slow at adopting these things. What, what's what's the deal with Pinterest? Uh, Chris, can you, you explain Pinterest? Sure. Yeah. Um, when I'm on a website, see, I'm Google Images or wherever, and I find a picture that, that I like, I go to, I click this, I go to Pinterest, and I take that picture, and I put it on my board, my, my bulletin board on Pinterest, so I can look back, and anyone else can come and look and see all the, all the pictures that I really like that I've selected. So you're like, so it's, it's, it's a scrapbook, basically. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I'll check it out, you know. I'm still trying to figure out Google+, Plus, really. <laughs> Yeah. I, I wait, the, my problem is how to integrate that and Facebook because I, I just I have a pretty big following on Facebook and I always feel like if I'm posting stuff there, do I just duplicate it over on Google Plus? And I'd rather have unique content for both, but I don't know. I'm still yeah. I'm still, I don't know who's going to win that battle. Sorry, Chris. I, I just messed up. <laughs> I just messed up our back end chat. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had a copy paste error. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what we do, what we do is we, we copy like, and paste the questions from Twitter, and Matt just copied the whole stream. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. I'm having major technical difficulties today. I'm a horrible person, so I'm going to back off now and let Chris drive yeah. because I'm just not really firing on all cylinders right now. <laughs> I'm going to go back up to the top and start asking some questions. Okay, Steve? Sure. Uh, First question I, comes from Tim. He wants to know about the, the top hat behind you on the wall. Oh, that's from Dennis. Dennis is over on Lumberjocks, and that's actually, it, it's a very funny story that everybody will find boring, but he sent it to me. <laughs> he sent it to me all the way from uh, Denmark. He lives in this little island in off of Denmark, and I mentioned he had that on his, this is a really boring story, but I won't tell you. Anyways, a guy in Denmark sent that to me, and it was really neat. He spent a fortune sending me this Paper. Yeah. Oh, he's a nice guy. Yeah, it was really nice. So, yeah. You've got some pretty big fans, obviously. I've seen a few things that you've been mailed. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I get a lot of stuff in the mail. It's because I have my actual mailing address on my, on my yeah. website. <laughs> Any favorite items? Yeah. Anything you want to single out or a couple of things? Probably that. I, could, I don't know if you, I can point this to you or not. Uh, you've probably seen it. This was oh, the framed... Uh, yeah. Well, I built the frame for it. This guy sent me this. This came from. There it is. It's this flag sent to me from Iraq, and so that, that's it's a cool. picture of it that was hanging up there. And they just said they watched my show over in Iraq, and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. So I built the frame for it and everything. That was kind of neat. I, and it was unexpected because there was no 
there was no note in the package or anything, so I had to do some little detective work to figure it all out. It was interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool to get all that, all that fan mail um, yeah. in the material. Sense. And some people send me snail mail, too, and that's kind of yeah. interesting. Because I, I, who gets mail mail anymore? So it's kind of fun to get it, really. You know, it's kind of interesting. Did they send you an email too, saying there's a mail? Is yeah, it almost all coming? <laughs> they send me. Sometimes they'll they'll, they'll actually write, type it on the computer, print it out, and mail me a letter. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. well, it's, mm. nice. it's it's nice getting stuff in the mail. It's not a bill. <laughs> um, let's look for another question here. Um, Tim has another question about pickles. <laughs> Do you know what this is about? <laughs> He wants to know if you're making pickles. <laughs> it's my next project. <laughs> it came up in uh, it came up in my live show. Guy wanted me to make a wooden pickle. What the hell? Yeah. Okay. And it, it just got, it became a, a kind of a thing, I guess. But I, uh -huh. I looked it up and I, and I found out it's kind of an obscene thing. So that I thought, oh, I didn't realize that's what it meant. So I kind of think the guy was trolling me in a way. So. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'm slow on these things. <laughs> so I was talking about this before the show, but uh, woodworking in America, people want to know if you're going to be there. Well, I don't know. Maybe. It's, Are you sure? You know, I don't know. I have to see what's going on that weekend. A lot of my life depends upon my son's acting life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but I, I'd like to. That's a that's a bit of a drive. That's like a five or six hour drive for me. But I may I may try that. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I've never really been to a woodworking show. I went to one up in Sacramento. Yeah. Is the other one the other leading woodworking? Yeah. Show. The woodworking shows is there. Just yeah. the, yeah, the, the yeah. not the. a it's the, the Ohio yeah. State yeah. University. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, the competing woodworking shows. So, <laughs> so I went to that one, uh, and that's the only uh, it's the only one I've been to. So I don't know. I'd like to see this one because it, it looks like an all star cast is going to be there with Roy Underhill. Oh yeah, yeah. So that would be fun. E even even Matt's going to be there, right, Matt? I will be there. I haven't bought my ticket yet or anything, but I'll be there. I used to go to the Cincinnati one, but now that they're in Pasadena, yeah. my I'm going to go and. Um, I'll be honest. I'm going mostly just to reconnect with people that I met a year ago. Um, if there's new seminars, I'll go to them, but I primarily, I save up my money all year. I buy stupid things that I don't know how to use when I'm there. And then, uh, but I think it was mostly just to hang out and, mm -hmm. and, and meet people real, in real the, life. The, the classes or seminars look really good at that too. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't looked at the schedule yet. Last year, it seemed like there was a lot of repeat, mm -hmm. um, but um, I love the Hand Tool Olympics. I did crappy, but I thought it was awesome. Yeah. I, almost, I almost killed a guy, but, you know, <laughs> well, what's the big deal? Um, it's, just, it's just fun, you know, to hang out with other woodworkers and not yeah. feel like a nerd because you're around other nerds. So. <laughs> now, are the, are the Olympics happening again in Pasadena? I sure hope the Hand Tool Olympics happen in Pasadena. Um, yeah. I, I, I'll be honest, I have been so busy with work that I haven't been paying attention. Um, I didn't really, I haven't watched any of the fine woodworking live videos that the modern woodworkers guys did yet, but uh, I hope they're going. I thought, I thought, I think that's a great event. I think the woodwork, I just thought it was really fun. So, and Bob Rosieski was there at the Hand Tool Olympics and I really like his podcast. So it's, it's, it's a fun time. It's a really fun time. And there's what beer. Do you, what do they do at the Olympics? So it's put on by the Society of American Period Furniture Makers, and it's you cut a dovetail by hand, you bore a hole, and they want to make sure you can do it straight and uh, not lots of tear out. There's a cross cut a board, there's a rip a board, and then there's a plain that ripped edge, and you're measured in time, but also um, they stick playing cards in there to see what your gaps are. So they, they check your dovetails for gaps. They check yeah. your board hole for square. They check your cross cut for square. They check your rip for square. They check your plane for square. And they do it all, you know, they have a jig set up to, 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 to do it where they put playing cards in. So it'll be like, oh, Steve did this in five minutes with three playing cards out of square or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll coach you and they'll help, they'll help you out. And the... The, one of the coolest parts, I think, is for people who aren't used to hand tools, 
and then when they use hand tools, they get frustrated because they're not properly sharpened. You get to use tools that are properly set up and properly sharpened, and then you kind of start to realize, oh, if you, if you really know what you're doing with the handsaw, and it's a properly tuned handsaw, it's actually just kind of faster. Um, and you, you get to watch a lot of, and there's a lot of smack talk, obviously. Tom Ivino, <clears throat> his, <laughs> his dovetails were like donkey teeth, which was great. But it's fun. Yeah. It's really fun. I think the Hand to Olympics is, is a really, really cool event. Really, really cool event. One of my favorite things about the it's whole thing. Yeah, it's basically a chance for you either to practice and to learn, learn and practice your technique, or else if you're, if you think you're really good, you can compete against other woodworkers and try and outdo them in speed and accuracy. So I think it's a great idea. I'd love to see it on again. Yeah, but from the sounds of it, according to Vic, it's not looking so good for Pasadena at least. It's too, bad. too bad. It's too bad. It'll probably be in Cincy. It'll yeah. Probably be for them to bring all their all their stuff down there. So, uh, but they, you know they let you use their tools. They have everything all set up, and it's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Vic is sharing some photos. I'll try and get those in the screen share from last year. Um, okay. If, if I was trying to find the one of uh, trying to find the one of you, Matt, with the saw kickback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got I got kickback from a handsaw. I don't know how, <laughs> but <laughs> it went flying. Oh, there's pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of us there. Rob's in there. Tom's in there. Diami, Nick Brown, Matt Vandalist, Steve Ramsey. Bunch of uh, Ian McKay. There's Steve Ramsey? Me? No, sorry. I'm <laughs> Taylor. I'm at Steve Taylor. Sorry. See, I told you I'm just not firing on all cylinders. Oh, look. Alcohol. There's Loogie, Mark Hochstein, Kerry Holtman. Sorry, I'm doing this too quick. Um, and they were, we met at a bar one night and they had a beer special. Oh, there you are, Chris. They had a yeah. beer special for us and uh, so we were buying buckets of beer and yeah, <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, this is Emily from the Society of American Period Furniture Makers and one of the premier smack talkers at the Hand Tool Olympics. Mm -hmm. Kyle uh, Texwood. There's, hey, there's Vic. Yeah. I walked in the bar and Vic comes up to me and gives me a big hug. <laughs> SP Wiz. There's Bob. Let's see, let's see if there's, I'm trying to skip forward to see if I can find some Hand Tool Olympics photos if they're in this album. Wow. <laughs> I need to go on a diet. Look at that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Are they in here? Are they in here? Well, you can't, oh, can't get forward. Oh, you're getting closer, maybe. Oh, getting maybe. closer. Some nice planes that I will Those never afford. On Red Sours there. Yep. On Hawk. Great guys. Wife Linda in the background. There's a. Uh, is that Mark? Mark. From yeah, sharpening a saw. I bought a couple saws from Mark. There's Shannon. Shannon's bench was was well. Chris, you were there too, right? Yep. Uh, was full. Yeah. I was working in his booth there with um the hand tool school and time warp tool works. Yeah, and there's the net. planing beam. Yep. That, that's the Lee Nielsen booth. Um, Denab. Yeah, he was showing off sharpening techniques and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Matt, do people tell you you look like Hank on Breaking Bad? Uh, no, I've never watched Breaking Bad. They used to tell me that I looked like, um, what's his name, from um, The Shield. Yeah. That, isn't that the same, that's the same guy, isn't it? Is it? Same oh, yeah. actor, I think. Yeah, I think he kind of looks like Bruce Willis, that guy. I feel like, yeah, yeah. A, bit, a little bigger. Right. Well, uh, yeah, I am I'm much bigger. Uh, uh, talking uh, to actors, not, yeah. In the waist, I'm bigger. This is my favorite picture. Oh, well, one of my favorite pictures, anyways. Do you guys know Adam Cherubini? Uh -uh. Yeah. He's a he's a writer for Popular Woodworking, and he's he's an all hand tools period woodworking kind of guy. And he's the tall guy in the top left of this picture here. Yeah, I got a picture of him here with Vic. <laughs> Here's this and is the Antwerp Olympics booth right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 
yeah, they still got benches and. Um, there's Adam showing, you know, talking to Vic about looks like hand cutting tenons. Was that one of the Ooh. events too? Was hand cutting tenons? I think. Oh, yeah, no. for for the. Uh, oh no, there's there's Wilbur um, using a Western yeah. saw backwards as an Asian saw. Yeah. There's Tom planing his board. Oh, that's it right there. So look at how bent yeah. that saw is. That was uh, your saw kickback? Yeah, so... Yeah. Just before. I'm, I'm short, and I'm not up up on the board enough, so my hand's in the middle of the board while the saw's way over on the right, and I'm just... I, I, can't, I can't believe I didn't be, uh, break their saw, <laughs> but that piece, that piece comes flying off, and... Hits a bunch of people, and it was it was really bad. It was bad. So, so it's a it's a fun time if you can go. Um, I'd recommend it. Yeah, I'll see. It does look fun. I'd, I'd like to check it out. You'd probably get some free beer. I I can always go for free beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Are there any more Are there any more questions from the chat room? Yeah. You got two more questions here queued up. Okay. Um, someone wanted to know how long it actually took you to make the Olympic rings. Oh, wow, it took me a long time. I actually worked late into the night one time, and I, I posted my progress on Facebook. <laughs> it was kind of fun to take a picture of that and show it. But l let me get those rings. Hang on a second. They're right here. That was... Uh, this is good good video right here. Huh? Yeah, it is. <laughs> There's the rings right there. So I think all in all... It, probably took me a good, I don't know, 10 hours, because I made some jigs to go with it. Yeah. Um, I really thought that, I, you know, what was confusing me on this was these these joints here, and I couldn't figure out when I first had my original picture is how this piece would go under and through there, lock in, if I did half laps on there. And I don't know, I just, I couldn't wrap my brain around. I couldn't figure yeah. out how it was going to work and how... And so then I, I came up with the idea of, well, if I, I needed to keep this curve going on these little, it's not showing up, this little curve here, yeah, to match up with here, and that was really what was causing me the most trouble. And then when I tried to cut it, they just exploded. So mm -hmm. I ended up just cutting the pieces by hand and just kind of gluing them, and super glued, super glued it all together. <laughs> so those are through cuts, not half laps, right? They're through cuts, yeah. They just look like half laps. They're kind of cheated, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do with this. It's one of those projects that sometimes I do projects that nobody's going to make. And then sometimes I do projects that a lot of people make. And I, I never really know what is going to happen. I think, like, recently, early in the summer, I, I, I thought, well, I'll do a bunch of summer projects, projects that people can make for their, around the house and stuff. So I did, uh, like, a garden bench. And, oh, my gosh, so many people, they're still making that thing because it was just a really simple, using two-by-fours and stuff. Uh, real simple project, and then that mallet. Oh, well, you're making three pounds again. Check this out. This guy sent. Here's another one that a viewer sent. Oh, I saw that. Huge mouth. This is the mallet I made. There's the size uh -huh. difference there. This thing is so heavy, but I used this. He sent this to me, and it's one of those things that it's like it looks too beautiful to use. Mm -hmm. I used it because I had some stuff I needed to bust apart to fit into my tiny trash can, so I used this thing. <laughs> Wow, it's like a sledgehammer. So now it's it's been broken in now, so I can get new out. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I like it when I get a new tool and I somehow accidentally manage to deface it the first day. Then I'm not nervous about wrecking it for later on. <laughs> hey, there's Wyatt. But hold on a second, my son's gonna come in here. I'm just wondering what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's Wyatt. You can get in here. See, I'm down here on this little picture. Hey, Wyatt. <laughs> you gotta go to rehearsal. Are you going to rehearsal? Nah, that's not. Oh, he's in a show called One Ten in the Shade. One Ten in the Shade, and it's a musical. And you know, every song goes like this. It's one Ten in the Shade. It's One Ten in the Shade. It's every song. <laughs> All they do. Right? Hi, Wyatt. <laughs> can you fly up and and even though I work at Microsoft, can you tech support Google Chrome for me? <laughs> He's having a little bit of problems. I, I just ditched Google Chrome. I'm, gonna, I'm an IE9 now. Let's I love uh, Google Chrome. Wow, I use it all the time. Well, it's not. It just keeps kicking up, so I'm... You're not supposed to use IE9. Google Chrome if you work for Microsoft, are you? 
Uh, hey man, it's a, we gotta we gotta keep our eyes on the competition, brother. <laughs> Doesn't he look like Hank from Breaking Bad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a positive reaction, right? There. <laughs> so uh, you were talking about the bench and the mallet and not knowing kind of what yeah. projects people are gonna do. And I, and I think I think oh, right. right. I think one of the reasons that people probably built the garden bench was. Um, uh, <laughs> Their spouses found it useful. Yeah, yeah. They used two by fours, so they didn't need to go to like some intimidating lumber yard and and ask right. her, "Can I get some S four S four quarter?" You know that that lingo, and okay. they could probably build it with tools. You know, D a DIY set of tools. Yeah, and those are ideally those are the projects that I really try to do the most. Is, uh, is projects that you can build in any number of ways and you don't really need necessarily to build it using a, a router or something. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. I try to keep them as simple as possible, mainly because I'm just not that good. So. <laughs> okay, that was my next question. <laughs> Most of your projects do seem on the simple side. Do you ever try anything that's very ambitious or really complicated, things that your viewers might not follow or be able to do? or? Uh, I try not to for video. No, it's well, you know, I guess uh, like I said, probably the router table. This was this year's big project, but you know, not a lot of people. At least the people who watch me are interested in just kind of woodworking for fun on weekends and just putting together right. quick little projects. And probably aren't really, you know, aspiring master woodworkers or anything. <laughs> so, right. so I just think it's fun just to cut wood. Yeah. Yeah, and you do a good job with your videos too, Steve. They're they're fun and they're concise too. They they're not drawn out by any means. Yeah, I learned that a long time ago to keep videos short. YouTube has a this wonderful feature where you can it has it's like analytics where you can see you know at how long people watch your videos and stuff. Really. Yeah, and so you can know right when people just bail out of your videos. It's usually right when the project is done, people are gone. So yeah. I've learned to okay. start the video, no long introductions, anything like that. Uh, I thought you were going to say there's a great feature called comments where people beam you out when you do something wrong or when you say something wrong. or. I'm just trying not to break the chat right now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good job there. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like your projects. I think the, the appeal to me of your projects is that um, there's so many so many things. So many times I get a project that's going to take multiple weekends, and so I can work all weekend, and it's hard to get a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Because right. I went from 48 percent done to 52 percent done. Right. And sometimes you just want to get out there, and and go from start to finish. Um, yeah. And be done at the end of the weekend and have something to show for it. And that's why. Um, when Mark Fagnola was building those uh, a couple years ago, those pencil boxes, if I had, like if my wife took my daughter to the zoo or to the movies, I'd go out and I'd build two or three of those things. Mm. Um, and I got my fix, right? And I got my woodworking <laughs> fix and I felt like I was complete. I actually have one right here. It's good video again, right? <laughs> I, I saw that chair. Oh. So I just keep this one. I got all my little, uh, my Mr. Smelly markers in it, but... Um, but you know, people are. I, I got people at work always asking me to build them one of these. So, and they're they're easy, right? These are easy, and you can be done with them in a in a weekend. So, yeah, I do. I like the short projects, and I like the fact that. And you know, actually, the the strange thing is, I never really. This all kind of just fell into place making the videos and everything. But, and it really sounds like a, a corny, hackneyed comment, but it's true that I really like the people that I've met who have built my projects and who really, who email me and tell me, you know, I really wasn't doing woodworking until I saw you do some of this stuff and I thought, you know, I could do that and just yeah. pick up the saw and do things and <laughs> that really kind of keeps me going a lot, seriously, because it's, I don't think what I do, like I said earlier, is not really about teaching anything and I'm certainly not the best woodworker. I always figure if somebody wants to learn woodworking, they're not going to come to me. They're going to go to Mark or somebody who can really show them step by step on how to do stuff. But I think just a matter of giving people some ideas of what can be done. And usually most people can do it far better than I can do it <laughs> anyway. But I do. It's all over the world. People just contact me and it's cool. And I, a shout out to Brazil too. I want to give a shout out to Brazil. Man, I 
so many people from Brazil, woodworkers in Brazil. I want to make a special woodworking video that has something to do with Brazil. I've been thinking about that for a while. <laughs> so, make, a, make a float. Yeah, I was thinking of something for carnival. Yeah, make a big carnival float. Yeah. You know, I, I, I actually, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. I think that if, um, I, I see your videos as like Get Woodworking Week every week, right? And so I, wa I really enjoyed uh, Tommy McDonald's video podcast. I don't enjoy his show as much because he tries to cram a big, huge project into 30 minutes. But I'll never build a Bombay. He built that big <laughs> Bombay secretary. I'll never build that. And while I got to see him do skills, and I could learn skills, I'll never build that project. But your projects, I'll build, right? And so I think as far as people getting into woodworking, they need, they need those projects that aren't going to take them months. They can do in maybe a weekend, yeah. right? I think, th I think those projects are key. That's, wh that's why I was kind of asking you where you get them, because... I remember one time you did, I think it was a toy, and you had laid out some books that you had got at the library. And I was like, you know, I how did I forget that the public library has books? Yeah, I and I can just go I use it. I get a lot of ideas for the library, definitely. Yeah. But I like to keep the projects open-ended enough where I, I rarely give measurements or size or plans or anything. But I think that getting the idea of how something is built, and then I think most people can really just take that and make yeah, it their cool. own and do anything with it, really. You yeah. know? All I'm doing is just making boxes, really. <laughs> yeah, but you, I don't know. It's, it's, it's cool stuff. So, all right. So we're to, we're about um, time to wrap up. Do we have any more questions, Chris? Sure. There's two more questions here. Um, first one is about. Um, it says your your wood projects and your videos are both very creative, but where does your strength lie? Is it in video production or is it in woodworking? Well, boy, I'd have to say both, really, because I, I couldn't do one without the other, really. But I do like the video. I like the editing a lot. I like that a lot more than the actual shooting. Shooting kind of gets in the way of woodworking sometimes. Oh, it does. But I, I'm not saying goodbye to you. I'm saying goodbye to them. They're going up to rehearsal. <laughs> I'm looking right outside. You, you can Here, I'll show you. Here's my outside area. Ooh. Oops. I'm showing the ground, aren't I? No, you know, you're showing the ceiling. Oh, there you are. There they go. <laughs> There's my truck. There's Wyatt waving goodbye. Bye. <laughs> That's a, there's a good video right there. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So what's the rehearsal for? 110 in the shade. That's what oh, that's right, because Les Mis is yeah. kind of like Oklahoma, sort of. It's one of these feel-good musicals, which is cool because he just got done doing Les Mis. Yeah. Total downer. Yeah. Something different. Yeah. 110 in the set. So where, where is that base? Is that in Egypt or Phoenix? It takes, or? Place, it takes place in Texas, I think during, okay. the, like, the, during the 30s or something, you know, dust. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't really know. Um, somebody wants to know what editing software do you use? I use Sony Vegas. There you go. There you go, Tim. And the last question. Nice to have the, the full two-car garage, isn't it? It is, definitely. Uh, so how do you keep it? How do you keep the family cars out of that garage? No car has ever been in this garage. <laughs> you parking your truck in the front so nobody can... Yeah, yeah. we've got a pretty long driveway, so we can fit both of our cars in there. <laughs> uh, anyhow, James wants to know, uh, does your family ever get fed up with the noise in the shop? Oh, no, because we have to put up with my son's guitar playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so there you go. So if you want to do woodworking in the shop, you buy your kid a uh, drum or a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> or a big sax. So become the lesser of two evils. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good plot. That's a good, uh, that's good, a good tip. tip that's, a, I'll call, that's a pro tip. Pro tip, yes. <laughs> but you know what I do is I try to plan by woodworking. So I have this rule that I don't start after 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. But I have a, I don't, and that's for the neighbors. You don't start after? And Before. I don't start until after 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And because, I don't know, it just seems to me every, the neighbors should be up by 8. Just wake up. <laughs> the day's half over at 9. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a bunch of early risers. But you know, woodworking really isn't all that noisy. It's, it's noisy in short periods. Like you cut a board and then you turn it all off. And then, the, you know, there's a lot of gluing and clamping. And in my case, just sitting around looking at it, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Do you run a dust collector? I don't. I have a shop vac. So I try to hook that up as much as I can. And, 
people always ask me how I keep my shop clean, and I keep it clean because I shoot the videos, but I, I probably would do it anyway because I don't like to have sawdust all over the place. I'm constantly vacuuming and sweeping and just trying to stay on top of it. So getting back to the uh, um, the gore videos, have you ever had a uh, shop accident? Nothing other than minor ones, you know, scrapes and cuts, um, nothing major. No, I'm, I'm pretty careful with what I do. I always have a, I have a, uh, I think if everybody would do one thing before they do woodworking is imagine where your hands are going to be through the entire procedure, whatever it's going to be, and do that before every single procedure, you're going to be fine for the most part. That That's a good tip. Yeah, so I kind of like imagine how I'm going to push it through, where am I going to be, and how everything's going to go. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's what you do. You count your fingers ahead of time, and you count them when you're done. And they should be the same number. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, well, it is past 7 o'clock, so um, we'll let you go. All right. Uh, I, I just want to say I appreciate it. Keep the videos coming. Um, I think your videos are great. It's like Good, working week, good Woodworking Week every week. Um, my daughter loves to watch your videos. She's five. Yeah, yeah I get a lot uh, of them. So we do that at bedtime. We always check to see if there's a new video. She likes, she likes your channel, and then there's a singer on YouTube named Christina Grimmie, mm -hmm. and she likes, to, she likes those videos too. Those are, those are her favorites. So she's not really into the, um, the fly fishing videos that I try and get her to watch. So <laughs> if I say, you know, I say you should, you should make it to Pasadena. We'll, we'll buy you beers and, uh, Keep the videos coming, and thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks for coming, Steve. You're welcome. Thanks. All right, everybody. We are going to end broadcast. We'll see you next week for Wood Chat.